right, it's Thursday and we're ready to plant. We've got the fertilizer boxes full, planters ready. The first thing we're gonna do is put in about four rows of sweet corn. We usually kind of bookend our corn planting with some sweet corn for ourselves. So we've got a little bit of sweet corn in each planting box. It's a nice way to test the planter out. And uh, we're putting it in a non-traditional place this year. Usually we would plant our sweet corn somewhere else on the farm. But the geese ravaged it last year, so we are going to uh, put it at the head of this field instead by the driveway. All right, here we go. I gotta shut the camera off so I can check a couple of things. All right, now we're going. We had to stop for a second because the uh, fertilizer delivery tubes were too kinked, and uh, they had a they had kind of a big curve in them, and the dry fertilizer was getting stopped up and not falling out where it was supposed to. So cut a few coils off of those and uh, now we seem to be rolling okay. closing wheel assembly that was that was giving us a problem uh, isn't doing the a perfect job but uh, it, it's, it's kind of cockeyed I don't know it's not it's closing the seed trench most of the time I guess that's what it, what's important so again I'm keeping an eye on that too to make sure it's gonna be all right not quite what you picture when you think about planting green but we're gonna have to take it because uh, I think it's probably more important that we get the corn in the ground so close enough well I have to say those copperhead closing wheels really do stitch the seed trench shut pretty nice just even having just the one on each row unit there's the marker arm mark and then not bad not bad at all. A little bit here and there it misses, but but that one, well, see that's not too bad there either. But that one that we still have that kind of janky row unit, that kind of oddball closing wheel doesn't quite get it. I think what it comes down to is probably that uh, those closing wheel assemblies are just really worn on this planter and it would probably be a good idea to replace them. So if we get a good corn yield this year, you can bet that's where some of the money's gonna go. So one question you all may have, if uh, there's other farmers watching, is why we uh, band our fertilizer right out of the plant here using dry fertilizer. Well, I know that's kind of an older way of doing it. A lot of guys have switched to liquid or they just broadcast spread it or use anhydrous. Um, we are doing this mainly because when we switch to no-till, we, well, here, little backstory. When we were doing tillage, what we would do is we'd broadcast all our nutrients, all our fertilizer with a uh, spreader from the co-op. And of course we were doing two passes with the uh, field cultivator. So we'd work that, uh, work that uh, nutrient in and then we plant and we wouldn't actually apply any fertilizer with the planter, just seed. Now that we switched to no-till, last year we put on starter with the planter. So a portion of our NP and K um, and then we broadcast the rest. Now all the weirdness of 2019 aside, we didn't get very good results from that. And um, I think partly it was just too much rain as with a lot of things about 2019. But uh, I think also with, uh, without working that granule, all, all, without working those granules into the uh, soil with tillage equipment, I think it just didn't soak in enough. And we had a, we had a stabilizer with our urea in that mix uh, and I just I think that it uh, I think that we had some uh, 
uh, denitrification. I think we had anaerobic conditions and away a lot of it went. So this year, we decided we're gonna put um, our, a heavier amount of starter on with the planter. And that way it's banded, it's right next to the corn row. Um, the only downside is that we gotta muscle a bunch of bucketfuls of fertilizer into the planter. And we're putting it on at a fairly heavy rate. Um, and then we're gonna split the application and do the next application later uh, at side dress, which uh, something we haven't done ever before. And uh, that'll be a little surprise for uh, a future video. I think that maybe some of you guys will think we're a little, a little nuts, but uh, <laughs> you'll see, we've got a plan for how to get it done. So anyway, uh, I would prefer not to use any synthetic fertilizer. From a soil health perspective, too much fertilizer is bad for the biology in the soil. Um, this is another reason we're banding it and putting it down with the planter because it puts it in a very specific row right next to the corn row um, and it leaves a lot of space. Uh, with the rain, I suppose you could argue that that, that fertilizer is going to infiltrate a lot of that soil anyway. I think there's arguments to be made both ways about it. For me, it makes me feel better. I don't have a lot of scientific evidence to back it, but I think by putting it in a specific spot and leaving a lot of space, and because we're planting wide row, 38 inch corn, it does give some space from one row to the next so that we're not burning up that soil biology and we're giving the bacteria and the fungi and the uh, protozoa and nematodes, the beneficial nematodes, and all the different aspects of the soil food web a chance to exist in there, but still get some nutrient on. Because we're not organic and because we don't have other ways to get nutrients into the soil, we still have to use that synthetic fertilizer. We don't have a diverse crop rotation yet, just corn and soybeans for now, uh, for the most part. So we do need to apply some kind of nutrient to get a good corn crop. Uh, maybe we'll get away from that in the future, but for now anyway, um, it's gonna get loud. There he goes. Uh-oh. Hang on. Well, before I was so rudely interrupted there, I was kind of on a roll with the fertilizer talk. Um, I think I got through the gist of what I wanted to say, though. You guys probably get the uh, the full idea there, which is just that we we got to use it. This is the way we're doing it this year to give it a shot and uh, hopefully still leave some room for that biology in between the corn rows. And, um, and uh, we cut back a little bit on our overall totals of NP and K. Um, so we're, we're just hoping for good weather and uh, some other factors to help influence that corn crop and get us a good enough yield. And then if I'm able to direct market more of it for a better price, um, you know, then I think that we're not so concerned about maximizing yield because the commodity markets are garbage right now and who knows what the future is gonna bring with that. So um, that's kind of the gist of it. So <laughs> I had to go and help dad because he was just about out of fertilizer in the boxes. So I had to ride on the planter and shuffle it around a little bit so he could finish that round. And then we brought it home and uh, refilled it and it's ready to go for tomorrow morning. So. 
I'm headed home and uh, we're gonna, actually I'm headed to a buddy's house to have a beer because I think I've earned it. And then uh, we're gonna pick this up tomorrow. So we'll catch you then. Well, okay, it's uh, Friday morning and uh, just got out to the farm and it's raining, <laughs> but it's supposed to pass quickly. So I think we're gonna maybe have a cup of coffee and uh, hang out for a minute, see if this blows by. And I don't think it's gonna rain enough to stop us from planting. Nothing wrong with a cup of coffee in the farmhouse. Well, the rain let up and uh, we finished that eight acre field that we started on. So now we're in the uh, 18 acre field here, closer to the farmyard and we're booking right along. This field's a little muddy at one end, so I guess we're gonna see how it goes as we do the outside rounds and the headlands here. This is a one-man job, really, but I like to walk around the field. I kind of ride on the back of the planter. That thing's supposed to have a monitor, but the wire's been torn off for a long time. It's on my fix-it list one of these years. So, you know, I check and make sure that the seeds are uh, coming out uh, and not getting, that nothing's gone wrong mechanically. I kind of keep an eye on the fertilizer tubs and, uh, that lets dad just focus on driving the tractor and keeping things straight. Which, uh, if we'd had a little more cereal rye growth, it gets pretty hard to see sometimes where your row markers are. Uh, so he, it takes more of his focus. This year that's not really the case, but it's just kind of nice to be out here and doing something. He's coming up on one of the, one of the wet spots in the field, so let's see how this goes. just being kind of surface seeded in the late fall with a regular grain drill. You can look down and see the actual grain drill planter unit rows. It, it did pretty well. I gotta say, I just think, consider that uh, a good way to do it. Oh, digging up worms with the corn planter. That's a good sign. There it is, four rows of fury riding off into the sunset. <laughs> We're just about done here, about 15 minutes and we'll uh, be wrapped up with corn planting. So that's a good feeling. It's gone really well today. That old 7,000 with the tune-ups. The only problem it's had is when we hit some muddy spots and the uh, gauge wheels on it were, um, I, I never put like a, the, the gauge wheel arms are worn. So the, the gauge wheels don't ride as close to the planting seed discs as they're supposed to. So mud can get in between them, especially on one row unit in particular. So we did plug up about, oh God, 20 times <laughs> when we got through some wet spots. So I was clearing that out a bunch. So uh, I know RK and Copperhead make a uh, an update kit for those. And uh, we'll probably put those on before next year. I'm thinking that's gonna be a necessary update. Other than that, that planter has done a fabulous job. It's uh, putting the seed where it needs to be. It's closing the seed trench. It's putting the fertilizer where we want it, uh, banded next to the corn row. The marker arms, which are an, a notorious problem on those because they are they have a slave cylinder with a little mechanical actuator that switches them each time you raise and lower the planter. They can be a real pain if that gets out of calibration. So we put some time into that and got it working right. It's only missed twice during the whole 26 acres of corn so they really it's really been working well so we're just about wrapped up and it's it's good to be in the home stretch so tomorrow we start beans okay it was more like 10 times i had to clean out the row units on the planter i'm just bitter about it hey good afternoon everyone we are into planting soybeans uh 
I got to apologize a little bit. I started yesterday, I got about six acres punched out, but I didn't take any video except for this. No tailing beans. And the reason for that is that uh, it was a day of frustration, big time. Uh, <laughs> we were slow to get started. We had a hard time getting the drill calibrated. Uh, then we had to go sell some hay to a couple of uh, folks, which was just fine, but it kept us from getting in the field for a little bit. And then um, once we got started, we realized the seating rate was set way too heavy on the drill. We, we made an error in our calibration. So we had to stop and try to get that sorted out. And then on top of that, uh, we trashed a bearing on one of the uh, no-till coulters. It froze up and started pushing a bunch of uh, residue in front of it. So had to come home, race off to Napa Auto Parts. It was the only thing that was open to get a replacement bearing. And luckily they were able to find us one. So we tore that apart, put a new bearing in, got everything put back together. So in the course of that whole nasty, messy, frustrating day, <laughs> I didn't really get out the phone and I didn't really uh, uh, take any footage. So flip the camera around here. We're uh, seeding soybeans into cornstalk residue. It's going pretty good. Uh, the improvements on the drill are helping. But the unfortunate thing about this drill is that with the press wheels in the back, it seems to be more of a conservation drill. Uh, it's a, maybe more of a minimum till drill, so it doesn't really have any mechanism to cover up the soybean seed. So when it puts the seed uh, in the ground, the press wheels press it in, but they only, you know, they don't cover the soybean seed. They just press it down flush with the top of the soil. So I'm not sure if I'm really doing this the way the manufacturer intended, but I'm uh, essentially running these no-till coulters just as deep as they'll go and carving a sort of a, a furrow before the planting coulters. And then the, uh, the seed disc openers or the planting coulters aren't even really making their own trench. They're just going over the top of the furrow made by the no-till coulters and dropping the soybean seeds in. And then I've got the press wheel set in the back here. I've got the press wheel set so that they really jam down the seed as far as it, it can go. And then what we're doing is dad is just going to come through with a little tractor and a drag and he's going to drag these fields really lightly just to shuffle the soil over the top of the soybean seed and um, except for areas where the where the soil surface is really hard and the no-till coulters don't bite in very far or if there's really heavy residue they don't seem to get through it um, most of the time they are they're pretty sharp but if there's heavy residue they don't quite cut through so we're hoping just giving it a quick light pass with a drag will uh, take care of that and get that seed incorporated and covered over and uh, we'll, we'll still get a good stand. Now, if everything goes well, I should get pretty close to done, but since we were heavily seeding the first uh, field, we might run a little short of beans. So I'm gonna try to get everything on I can. Most likely we'll run out of seed before I'll get done. So here we go. for the dragging which dad is doing right now that's about eight acres and it went pretty smooth there he goes big guy on a little tractor I gotta get a picture of your uh, excellent drag Yeah, that's a high quality piece of equipment right there. 
I'm amazed it isn't flying apart. There's hardly anything left of it. That drag is covering up the beans though. If we're looking here, this is all dragged over. And then right here is where the dividing line is. And then you can see the open trenches. We can even see the soybean seeds in there. So just by dragging that over, he is covering those seeds up so that we can uh, you know, have a good chance at getting a decent crop. Oh, here he comes. I better get out of the way. Time for me to get back to planting anyway. All right, I'm on our last field here. Just checking the seed levels in the boxes, trying to decide if we're gonna have enough beans. At the last minute, we switched up our corn and soybean acreage, and decided to do a little less corn, given that I'm gonna try to direct market more of it, and uh, the corn prices are pretty icky. So, so we decided to do a little more beans uh, and had to pick up an extra six bags of seed to account for the extra six acres or so. Um, but because we were seeding a little heavy, we were wondering if we might run a little short. So these were a different brand. We had to recalibrate the drill because the seed size was different. So uh, I've been kind of keeping an eye on it here and trying to divine and read the tea leaves as much as possible uh, and uh, see if uh, maybe I can guess if we're going to run out. Not much we can do about it today anyway. It's Sunday, so nobody's open and it's getting late. Anyway, that's it. Just stop. Check it out. Good morning everyone. It is Monday morning. Uh, we got about four acres of beans left to plant. I didn't quite get done last night. I ran into a small problem with the no-till drill and getting the beans in the ground. Uh, as you know, I was telling you that you know it, it doesn't quite cover the beans so we were dragging with a, the old, that old crusty rusty drag to uh, uh, get them covered up after the no-till drill kind of puts them in a, in a trench. But on this last field, um, there's a lot of clay in the field and, uh, well, let me just show you what was happening. Okay. So here's where I started to run into problems. There's kind of a swale in this field you can see there. And, um, this field was really wet last year. And because we made multiple passes over it with, uh, interceding cover crops, you'd get high spots where the corn rows are. And then in between there'd be kind of a little dip. So you had these waves in the field. So as I was planting, when I was going with the corn stalk rows, I'd get to a point where the no-till coulters were riding really high. They'd, they'd hit these high spots and dig really deep ruts, but then where there was a low spot, the coulters didn't even touch the ground. In fact, the planting coulters didn't even touch the ground. And they're just dropping soybeans on the soil surface without really getting them in. And I think if we drag that, even if we drag it with uh, that old drag, it wasn't going to cover them with enough soil. And so we'd end up with stripes uh, where we'd have bad germination in the field. So this is about as far as I got. Uh, well, a few more passes, kind of, I got to about there. And then I just said, this is not looking good. And I stopped and I called dad and kind of let him know what was happening. So then over here, I switched and started going across the corn stalks with the drill. Right here, you can kind of see that's where I stopped yesterday. And I just did this little corner going the other direction. And that did a lot better job, but I was still concerned that there were a few places where I just was not, yeah, you can see that, that actually got in there pretty good, uh, except for like a few places like here where we're really pretty light. You'd go over a, a hump and then the coulters would kind of skip. And uh, at that point it was starting to get dark. And to be honest, I really couldn't tell what kind of a job I was doing. So I decided to quit for the night and head in. And uh, we decided to get out the disc. So dad took the, uh, our, our disc and just lightly disced up the rest of it so that we could make sure and get good incorporation with the seed. I think it's important to note that while we're trying to be really diligent about doing our no-till and cover crop system here, uh, you have to be practical too. I think it's important to not be so zealous about an idea that it blinds you to doing a good job. So <laughs> we decided to do just a little light tillage on this field just simply because 
if we don't get a good stand of beans, ultimately that's gonna hurt us. So, um, I hope it was worth it. I don't think it did too much damage because we only, you know, the disc only goes down maybe an inch at most. And, uh, and he didn't really rip through it fast. So, uh, he kind of just lightly fluffed it up and evened things out. So now I'm gonna try to finish planting. And uh, in a couple hours here, if I don't run out of beans, I'll be done. Oh yeah, and one last little side note. I think it's maybe obvious to anyone who's watching the video that that frost seeding that I did earlier this spring, I'm not gonna say that was a success. <laughs> when you look, there's a, there's a little bit of annual ryegrass from last year's interseeding that still managed to survive the winter. And so there's some of that growing in the stubble here in the corn residue. And then a little bit of that cereal rye that I frost seeded did germinate in the right spots where it had the right moisture and the right temperature and the soil conditions were favorable for it. There's some that germinated. I'm looking at some at my feet right now. So I don't know that it was an utter failure. I think that every little bit counts as far as getting those living roots in the soil. I'm not sure how much of an effect it really had, so I don't know that I would do it again. I think maybe uh, the strategy will just be to get the crops off early enough in the fall that we can fall seed a small grain if we're gonna do a small, gr a small grain cover of any kind. But I think it was worth trying and it wasn't very expensive. So, um, you know, doing an experiment and getting a, a feel for it is uh, it's an important step, it's something you gotta do all the time. So it's that old saying, if you're not failing at something, then you're not trying hard enough.